when you are greeted with the shuttle off login screen, you'll notice a couple things here. So one, uh, we support uh, the three major source control platforms, GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket. Um, but one a piece that's really near and dear to my heart is the local login here. And this is really how we allow business stakeholders to be part of that DevOps conversation. So if you don't have access to source control, you can still participate in the DevOps process um, instead of being an afterthought. For uh, today's walkthrough, I'm just gonna log in here with GitHub. And once I log in, you'll see that you're presented with the uh, connect page. And the connect page gives me a central location to set up all the credentials for my team and connect to all the cloud providers and source control tools. Um, in the future, we will have support for Docker containers in here as well to support native um, Docker integrations. Um, but right now we facilitate multi-cloud deployments um, as one of our key uh, capabilities. So for today, we're connected to AWS, GitHub, and the Chef Habitat Depot to build and uh, help deploy our applications. And so once you're all set up here and your teams are all set up, the next thing um, you can do is have the developers go set up their build pipelines. So let's go take a look at that. So on the build section, I already have two pipelines set up here for two applications. One is a Node.js web application and one's a Spring Boot application. So I'll just uh, dive into the Node.js web app. So if I click edit here, the first thing I'll know, uh, or uh, the first thing I'll see within the pipeline editor is the sections on the left-hand side here. Um, these are the tasks that can be dragged and dropped into the pipeline to build out that no-code pipeline. And so we have triggers here, um, which will allow users to um, deploy code from commits to their source control or to trigger uh, code builds from pipeline executions, as well as on a predetermined schedule. There's a code block here that allows users to set up the actual code they wanna build, as well as notifications to notify individuals are uh, required to be notified as part of the build process. Um, the other piece here um, that you'll notice is gates. And these gates is how we integrate uh, the business processes into your pipeline. So you can drag and drop the gates to add approvals, acknowledgements, or time delays, depending on uh, regulatory or SLA needs uh, you have within your organization. And so I'm just gonna dive here into the code block just to show you how no code builds work. So in order to do a no code build, you can expand the code block and you see I already have this uh, web app Node.js set up. But if we were to set up another build, it's just simple as clicking the add button and then selecting the repo you wanna build from GitHub. And so I'm not gonna select that right now since I already have one set up. Uh, and that's it. That's all you have to do to get no code builds going. And if I hit launch, the build has started. So now instead of, you know, traditionally going into a um, CI tool and setting up a coded build process, you were able to do that with a few uh, simple clicks. And if I click into that running pipeline, you'll see there's the pipeline execution history, as well as details around um, the execution. So we can see when it was triggered, who uh, ran the build, as well as all the pipeline execution steps that were executed. And we have logs streaming in real time as well. So from a development perspective, they're the ones building and pack packaging the app. Um, if the developer runs into a build issue, they'd be able to see exactly what's going on here. And if I click on one of the previous executed builds, um, you can see you know, the full log output is present here for them to really dig into what happened as part of the build process. So while that application's building, let's go take a look at how an operator may do a no-code deploy. So once I click on the deployment tab, I'm presented with all my deployment pipelines. As you can see, I have a few deployment pipelines here that span multiple environments. Um, I'm actually gonna dig into this monitoring application this time around. And what I can see again when I go in here is it's very similar um, to the build pipelines. One of the main differences here though is this destination section. So this allows me to define what applications I'm deploying and what cloud providers they're going to. So let me open up the application components section and dive a bit deeper into it. Um, and when, when we're talking about application configurations, one of the things I do wanna highlight 
is we try to de uh, deploy applications in a infrastructure agnostic way. And so what that means is we configure the applications um, outside of the infrastructure here. And the reason that's important is in a dev environment, you may want to take that application and deploy it onto a single server for a user. In a production environment, that same application may span multiple servers to be more robust. So traditionally, um, if you wrote your infrastructure as code, or if you were using um, the web consoles available from the major cloud providers, you would have to set this up manually for your different environments, where here you're able to accomplish it within a few clicks. And we'll get to that in a minute. So to configure an application, um, what you can do is click add here. And so there's a couple places you can add an application from. You can select an application that was created through your build pipeline, or there's another option of selecting from a Habitat builder. Um, and there's a public Habitat builder available from Chef Software that has hundreds of uh, prepackaged applications already ready to deploy. But if you have your own builder as well, you can uh, pick applications from there. And so right now, we have two applications um, selected. Um, it, there's one called Grafana and one called Prometheus. And this is a standard um, metrics aggregation platform um, familiar to a lot of people in the DevOps uh, community. That's used for monitoring and aggregating um, infrastructure metrics. And so Grafana requires Prometheus as a backend database um, to be able to function. And if I want to configure how Prometheus and Grafana will behave, I can kick, click this little gear and it will bring up the configurations for the application I can edit. Uh, now, one of the key things with these configurations is what we do is we save these configurations on a per environment basis for your pipelines um, in a secure vault. And so your passwords and all your app configurations are securely stored and maintained for you across all your different environments. So you don't have to worry about the wrong environment getting the wrong configuration or how to actually set up and store your configurations on your own. The other piece I wanna highlight here is service discovery. And so some of you may be familiar with service discovery and its capabilities. And it's really about um, allowing applications to communicate to each other without identifying specific information about the infrastructure. For instance, um, like their IP address. So typically in a traditional sense, if I wanted my front end to talk to a backend database, I would have to specify that this front end application is gonna connect maybe to this DNS or this um, IP address. Um, but what we have here is a section called binds. And with binds, you can tell your front end to talk to the Prometheus backend, and it doesn't matter where that uh, backend lives. As long as it's available in that same network, they can communicate to each other. Um, and that makes for a very dynamic um, application environment, but that also allows you to be flexible on how you deploy your applications across your environments. And so once you're done configuring the application components, you can now go configure your deployments. And in this case, we're gonna be deploying to the cloud. And so right now I have one server in AWS set up with both the Grafana and Prometheus components. I can click on the edit button here um, just to see the different options that are available to edit, uh, to edit and configure the server with. So you can select the server sizes. If I'm deploying a cluster of servers, I can just increase the instance count and I could instantly have multiple servers come online. Um, and I can also adjust the storage sizes. The other items we're able to configure here are your security rules for your firewalls for the server, your DNS, you may need load balancers as well as startup scripts. Uh, this may seem a bit odd because we're no CI/CD platform, but we fully realize there's going to be edge cases that we may not be able to accommodate right away. So the startup scripts allow you to um, address those edge cases. And so that's all that was needed to configure applications uh, to deployment to the cloud. So traditionally, again, this would have been a very manual process or you'd have to write um, quite a bit of code in order to be able to configure the pipelines as well as the provisioning. Um, but in under a couple of minutes, we actually have a deployment pipeline ready and available to launch into the cloud. Now, going back to the deploy, I just want to show 
one more pipeline here um, just to compare and contrast what dev and prod could look like. And so in the prod pipeline, again, very similar configuration for the same application, right? It has that same service discovery we inherited from dev. But now this time, we're actually deploying across two servers. And so we don't have to change anything with the configuration. We just have to say that one server is going to come up and it's going to have the Grafana front end and another server is going to come up and have the Prometheus back end and they'll know how to communicate and there's no coding required to be able to um, do the service discovery. And the other uh, part I want to highlight is um, the approval gates. Um, so a lot of organizations in order to deploy to production require some sort of uh, checks and balances. And with approval gates, you're able to accomplish that with shuttle ops. So you can set up teams or individuals to approve. And given that they do approve the deployment to production, the pr uh, deployment will continue. And all that information is audited and uh, readily available. So again, there's no manual steps in uh, uh, providing custom code to be able to set up all these gates. So now that uh, you know, you've, de you've deployed to dev and prod and you've deployed a few applications, the last thing to do is really manage these applications once they're live. And to do that, we can head to the Manage tab. And one of the things we notice in the Manage tab um, is that we can see all the applications consolidated. And so we have a quick view into the applications across their environments. I'm just going to click in here. And we can see our monitoring application is deployed to Dev and Prod. We have 100% health on both servers. And we can see that there's in dev, the two packages, Prometheus and Grafana, deployed to one server. And we can see in production, both Grafana and Prometheus deployed across two servers. And so that gives us a one-stop shop to see you know, where, what components are deployed where, across which environments. Um, and if we want to get more information on how the um, applications are behaving, we can click into application logs here. I'm just going to filter on one of the servers. And we can see we have real-time data being streamed in from the application server. So if something were it was to go wrong with the application, you'd be able to take a look at exactly what's going on right away without going into another tool or having to set up um, additional uh, tooling around that. And so that's a, a quick overview of the connect, build, deploy, and manage sections. The one final section um, that's could be useful, and this may be more for business stakeholders, but it could also be useful for the apps and ops side, um, is dashboards. So we do have the capability to view dashboards. And right here, we have a few different widgets um, that I'm just going to highlight today. And I think the most interesting one here is pipeline performance history. And so I'm able to drill down into the different pipelines I have and just get a quick glance of how things are performing. And we can see here that the Node.js web app build you know, roughly takes you know, two, 250 seconds to build. And it, it seems fairly consistent, except you know, this one here took a bit longer. But this gives me visibility into how the pipelines um, and deployments are performing across my applications. Thanks for stopping by. For more information on no-code CICD or how to get started with our no-code CICD platform, please visit us at shuttleops.io.